I want to do a follow up on uh, my video regarding Immortal Soul and Once Saved Always Saved, but before I do that, let me just uh, address this comment right here, knowledge is power. He says, you are denied way too many things. I'm not sure if that's what he meant to say. You're denied way too many things. I'm not sure what that means. I'm denied way too many things. Um, <clears throat> my suspicion, if you will, is that uh, he's saying that I'm denying too many things. Perhaps in the article that I shared that suggest that uh, <clears throat> there were Superman and Batman and Robin and Spider-Man and all these superheroes before Flood of Noah. I'm denying those things, and that's true, I am denying those things. I'm not really sure what either choose truth or lie. There's no truth in a lie. There's therefore no knowledge but deception. So I'm, I, you know, I wish uh, you guys would, um, at the very least, spell check. I know I, I screw up more than anybody, but I have no idea what you're referring to exactly. And I'd like to address. If I'm wrong about something, I want to know about it, really. And so, real quickly, let me go over this. To spare anybody that you know from seeing that particular video, uh, the great ri the great river Euphrates drying up because uh, you know there's people saying that well last year the river was drying up. I don't know about this year, but then they read uh, Revelation 16 verse 12, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So they're saying this is the Bible being uh, fulfilled or the prophecies are coming true right now as we sit here on uh, social media watching CNN and Fox News. And that's not going to happen. That's not what this is talking about at all. Revelation 16. Now if you guys, my advice would be to read if you want to understand the book of Revelation, read the book. It takes a little under two hours. Read it two, three times a year. You could read it once every three months, so that would be four times a year. And the more you read it, the more you will understand the whole book. Alright, now that is if you have faith. Without faith, you won't be able to understand any of it. But if you do have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and you are saved and you have the Spirit of God in you and you have complete confidence that the words you're reading are from God, the more you read, the more you're going to understand and the easier it's going to be. And isn't that true for just about everything in life? The more we do something, the easier it becomes. So also when we read the book of Revelation. Now this chapter here, Revelation 16, when the seven vials of the wrath of God are poured out onto the earth, this is the judgment day or the wrath of God when we are lifted up in the air to be with the Lord Jesus. And the enemy, the unsaved, are at our feet. All right, this is consistent with everything we read in the Bible. And I'll say this again. You, you should always uh, cross-reference, if you will, or compare at the very least, what Jesus says in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. All right, because if you are preaching something that contradicts or conflicts with what we're reading in this account because Jesus tells us very plainly 
He's asked, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And he lays it out better than anybody. Right, so if you're reading, uh, if you're, you know, thinking, imagining, uh, there's a, you know, there's going to be um, multiple wraths of God or multiple raptures multiple returns of the Lord Jesus Christ that's you're not seeing it here in Matthew 24 mark 13 or Luke 21 all right because uh, Jesus makes it very plain that when he comes in the clouds of heaven that the angel shall gather up the elect which is those of us that are saved we shall be lifted up in the air this is this is found all throughout the Bible. Okay, that's when the enemy is at our feet. And this goes all the way back to Genesis three, till I make thine enemy thy footstool. All right. So this is consistent. Oh, it really. I thought it was. Maybe they changed the Bible on me. Oh. Uh, excuse me foot and heel same thing right and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel talking about the heel of Jesus because Jesus is going to stomp on the enemy how can he stomp on the enemy except the enemy be at our feet right so this is consistent uh, all throughout the Bible and it, Really, Revelation 16 is just giving us another picture, if you will, of what this wrath of God is going to be like for the unsaved. All right? This is not happening at all. The claim that this is happening now is what you, what you have to say is that everybody on earth right now is not saved. And that's utterly ridiculous okay those of us that are saved are not going to have to endure the wrath of God we will be up in the air and this goes back to this um, silly argument that people always want to make about well they say we Christians aren't going to go through the tribulation and I don't know why they confuse the great tribulation with the wrath of God the right to say we're not going to go through the wrath of God but they're wrong to say we're not going through this great tribulation that the world is enduring right now in the world you shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world All right so we will endure tribulation now I think what they want to argue is that um, when we read about the great tribulation here in Matthew 24 for example that this is actually talking about the wrath of God and um, the problem I have with that is except those days be short and there should be no flesh be saved okay so this suggests to me that there will be saved people during the great tribulation and then clearly it says immediately after the tribulation is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are lifted up in the air to be with the Lord and our enemy down below is devoured destroyed forever crushed all right so uh, what am I what am I denying here what what have, what have I been denied of? That's what I'd like to know. If I'm wrong about something, I want to know, man. Because this has been really a focus of mine since I became a believer, even from before I became a believer. Was the end time prophecies, the end of the world stuff. And if you know something I don't, man, for crying out loud, man, let me know. Alright, so let me get to immortal souls 
Alright, first of all, I'm going to address every comment that he makes here. Hell is biblically sound doctrine. Um, read Matthew 13, Luke 13. What's. Let me read what Robo says here. I don't believe in the mortal soul unless you are saved. I now don't believe anymore in an eternal consciousness or conscious torture in hell. I now believe hell is the grave. When you're dead, you're dead. And know nothing just like David talks about, but hell is, is eternal. Once you are dead, you dead. The worm dieth not, meaning death is final and forever. And the rich man and Lazarus is a parable about the law and grace, and they cannot mix. There is a great gulf between them. And immortal says, Hell is biblically sound doctrine. Read Matthew 13, Luke 13, Revelation 14, which says, He also shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is mingled with pure wine in the cup of his wrath, and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the sight of the holy angels and in the sight of the Lamb. probably should this guy reads from a Catholic Bible but that sounds pretty close let's get to this point as for an immortal soul I myself have left my body at the age of nine I saw my body in my bed and I floated upwards to the ceiling saw my brother in his bed from the ceiling I was out of my body for quite some time I knew I had come out of my body I felt strong pointing sensation which pulled me out and I experienced what it's like to be in the spiritual realm. We have eternal souls. It doesn't end at the grave. Our souls continue forever. So to back that up a little bit. So my mother in 1972 uh, had uh, surgery and she was, she flatlined a couple of times. And uh, she told me about that experience. And she said, this was before she was a believer. In the Lord Jesus Christ she told me that she didn't know what was after life but she told me that there's more to it there's something more there is what she told me and uh, there's no question about it I've not had those types of experiences but there's no doubt in my mind that uh, that Jesus is real that there is more to life than what we're seeing right now and that we do have the opportunity for everlasting life through Jesus Christ um, and our time is a limited period of time so if you're not saved uh, this is your opportunity today right and because there is more to life I mean I think when you're young you don't realize it the older you get uh, the more obvious it becomes maybe not to everybody but to me it's obvious this world's coming to an end and there's more to what we experience in this flesh as far as life goes so there's a lot, there's a lot going on that really we're blind to when we're mixed up in the world. So let's continue with the mortal soul. The wrath of God is death. So uh, to Robo's point, <clears throat> now to be fair about this, we are <clears throat> we also get uh, these examples. For example. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death. And he that overcomes is he that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus has overcome, we are in him, we are in him and he is in us. So there is the second death. Alright, so the flesh dies. That's the first death. And the second death is on Judgment Day when God kills the soul. Fear not. Him that can kill body, but not the soul. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. 
So, the soul will die when God kills it. All right, the devil can't kill your soul, but God can. Makes it all the... It, I mean, it should be scary to think about if you are not saved. It really should be. Abide doesn't mean striving to stay somewhere. It's a place of being. Like I abide in this body. Well, right, but when we abide in Jesus, Jesus abides in us. And we will never separate. Right? Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Oh my goodness sakes. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. I don't know what the I don't know what the Bible says. Nothing separate love. It might not right? nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay? So nothing can separate us. So once we are a new creature, we are saved, sealed, secured, sanctified forever. Nothing can change that. Alright, so let's get into big stuff here look at this this guy wrote a book for us so let's go so just a new comment explained Bible translations there's only one Bible translated into more than 500 languages in the world Catholics use multiple multiples of different versions as you would know so let's let's support that let's be as fair as we can there's only one Bible translated into more than 500 languages in the world 500 languages in the world does the Bible confirm this well let's see come hither I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters and the waters which thou sawest where the whore sits are the people's multitudes nations and tongues the whore has multiples of different versions as Revelation 17 tells us more than 500 tongues languages in the world so yeah that's I don't doubt that at all buddy come on I myself speak two languages English and my secondary language is Croatian not sure if you speak a secondary language well I, I barely speak speak one language. Um, not very good at the one language that I speak, but it's the only language I know. But it would make it much easier for you to understand the issues of translation and knowing different languages. Yeah, so the problem I have, Mr. Souls, is you have to have a foundation. You have to say, this is the perfect, pure Word of God. And then therefore, when that perfect, pure Word of God is translated into your Bible, you have to be able to compare word for word. This word here, that word there. They match up. The problem you have, Mr. Souls, is you do not have that foundation. You don't have a perfect Bible that you point to. All you have is your imagination. Now, there is no original. There is no Hebrew Bible that everybody translates from. There's no Greek Bible that everybody translates from. It does not exist. And there's an easy way to prove this, and that is to go out there and look for it. Go find it. Go find this perfect Bible, because they don't exist. All you have is thousands upon thousands of manuscripts, and you're picking and choosing which manuscript that you think is right and not that <laughs> not all manuscripts agree and furthermore what you're saying is that God can't speak your language which is ridiculous what kind of God do you worship that can't speak the language that you speak alright and then um, 
the other side of that is, um, well, let's let's continue, because so I, I could go on a rant, which I do too often. But my, I myself speak two languages. He, spoke, he speaks English and Croatian. If I say Zasto, T, la la blah blah, I wouldn't. I have no idea. You could say mumble blah blah blah. It's the same thing because I don't understand nothing. How come you don't understand what I say? But the inner linear translation. In so your inner linear is basing its translation on what? And there are what there are inner linears. Just because there are inner linears does not mean they have a solid foundation which they base their translation from there. You could take the English Bible, translate each word into Chinese, and then translate it back into English using all the variables associated with that word. What's the difference? There is no difference. Because they're Chinese is just a language. In whatever other language you're using, just a language. And if you're basing it on manuscripts, what manuscripts are you basing it off of? They don't all agree. They're not all complete. And I wouldn't understand a single one. Just like I don't understand what your Zasto real blah, blah blah blah. I don't understand. If you have a man if you show me a manuscript in a foreign language, it won't mean nothing to me. So now you're left with well, I have to put all my trust in the man that's translating these words for me you're not putting any trust in the word of god whatsoever that's the problem i have you either trust god or you don't as for me i trust god fully i fully am convinced that i have the perfect pure word of god in the english language it's in my king james bible you can't say that about any bible in the english language you can't say that about any Bible in any foreign language, whether it's Croatia or any other language. Because you don't believe in a perfect Bible anywhere on earth at any time in any language. And what I'd like to do is get people just to admit that. Just admit it, and, and a lot of people do, and it's pathetic in my opinion. How can you preach a perfect God and not have a perfect Bible? You're therefore left with making up whatever you want. Well, Jesus says, I'm the way and the truth and the life. And you said, well, no, nah, technically the, this word here, way, in Chinese means multiple directions. And anybody can say it. You can change it to whatever you want. You know, you could change dog to cat. I mean, it's it, whatever you want it to be, right? So that's the problem. That's the problem I have with that philosophy. I have a problem with that idea. Inner linear is nothing to me. Take that inner linear and throw it in the garbage can because it has no use for me. Because I, I'm the, now, now I'm, I'm no longer trusting God. I'm trusting whoever wrote that inner linear and whoever is, you know, taking the words and retranslating them and. It, you know, a lot of them, or the ones I've seen, they, they give you a bunch of variables. So it could be dog, or it could be cat, it could be whatever you want it to be. And the problem is, where's, what's the foundation? Uh, a, another word in another language that I don't understand? How is that the foundation? I want the true Word of God, the true Bible. The pure Word of God. Where can I find that? Well, I can't find it. It took me a while to figure that out. Once I realized there was no perfect Bible in another language it always bothered it, I mean it started to really bother me that why can't we have a perfect Bible in our language so if you're so convinced of all this why don't you translate the Bible perfectly into the English language if we don't already have one I mean you could just think about how popular you would be if you did that of course you're going to you're going to make the same mistake all the modern perversions make because they have to change the word of God in order to get their copyright. That's why they change words. That's why you see in all these modern versions, they have uh, different words that they use constantly all throughout the Bible. It's, be it's not because of any 
manuscript they're basing off of, they're basing their translations off the copyright laws, all right? And they're lying to people because they want to sell their book. They want to make the money. They want to buy their yachts and their cruise ships and and all that, you know, mansions and live the good life. It's not about the truth at all. It's about making money, lots of money. That's what they do. And hence why the King James only translate the King James Bible is not a translation. It is the pure word of God. Of course, you can argue that everything in the Bible is a translation. All right. So, I mean, you go all the way back bone of my bones all right so adam says this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man that's a translation no matter what language you translate it into it's a translation every time because this language that adam spoke at that time was confounded in Genesis 11 and nobody spoke that original language after that nobody understood it nobody spoke it and God confounded the language and now uh, there are multiple languages and people that argue well that first language that original language was still there they just had, had at languages added on that's nonsense it's illogical ridiculousness because if you look like say take uh, our friend here immortal let's say okay let's say god confounded a language and he added croatia all right so we all speak english that's the original language all right so now immortal he he's been given this croatian language i've been given chinese well screw croatian and screw chinese I, Let's speak English. <laughs> huh? That's the only way we're going to be able to understand each other. No, that's not how it was. That's not what happened. The original language was completely removed. That, it was confounded in a way that nobody could understand the original language. Okay, so anyway. And so you look at the interlinear taking words from another language no foundation Bible at all and blah 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 John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life how can you have everlasting life and then lose it if you could lose your everlasting life then it wouldn't be everlasting life come on now and hence uh, he, you just quoted a verse and said that's why King James Bible is only a translation, and not 100% correctly. Um, you're going to have to try a lot harder than that. Just, all you have to do, Mr. Souls, is show me where this perfect Bible is that you're basing your translation from. All right? Hey. Nobody's ever been able to find it. It's not there. It does not exist. In fact, Moses had the originals and he smashed them. That's what he thought about the originals. Huh? All right, so let's go. Let's continue. Yes, I don't believe in a land down under. Right, he doesn't believe that he lives underneath the planet. I appreciate time making the video. He's used to me beating up on him. I always, I'm always beating up on him because he's a Catholic. But uh, in case you didn't know, Immortal Souls, he's one of the original Flat Earthers. He's the one, he's one of the first ones to get it, to have his eyes opened up, really, in this era of YouTube, okay? Because back then, in 2013, 2014, there was hardly anybody at all putting out Flat Earth videos, except he was one of them. Because he, he got it. He understands it. And the guy lives in Australia. Down under. Now what's that tell you? Man, that To me, it tells me that God has opened his eyes. And God has given him a purpose. And 
he did his purpose very well and um, I'm fully confident that he has helped a lot of people to question and to look at the world around them differently okay and that, that's no credit really to the mortal souls that's all credit to God uh, that's God working in people alright so now after I played nice there let me get mean again so a few things I know that you believe the King James Bible it's not a version it's a it's the Bible is the pure word of God in English absolutely but it was the Catholic Church that canonized the Bible and Protestants are the ones who brought about their own translations to English yet even Martin Luther himself didn't deny that you could lose your salvation okay so you got two different things on the table right here Number one, the Catholic Church didn't canonize a turd. They didn't canonize nothing. All right, you got a bunch of homos sitting around in a room making a declaration that this is the what we're going to call the Bible. That doesn't mean nothing at all. God is in control of the Bible. He's the one that put the words in each book, and he's the one to put all the books into one book called the Bible. God's in control of the whole thing. All right. The will of man, oh, I'm sorry, for the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. God is in control of everything. Man ain't can control of nothing, man. They, they might be able to squat a turd and say this is canonized, but that doesn't mean squat, all right? doesn't mean nothing at all I could have done the same thing me and my drunken buddies could have done the same thing at the age of 16 doesn't mean nothing those people in the Catholic Church are no greater than those of us today that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ they don't have any authority over us and they don't have any they don't have certainly don't have authority over the Word of God so come on I should say I got fooled by this nonsense when I first became a believer and then I realized uh, one there is no perfect Bible and then two men ain't in control of this God is how can Christ tell his apostles to remain in him you gotta stay in me boys you gotta stay in me if they were guaranteed salvation St. Paul in one, in, sorry, St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 27. I'm not going to read his corrupt Catholic homo version. I'm going to read the true word of God. And look, if these Catholic priests and the Pope himself, if they weren't homos, how's come? How's come I've never heard of a Mrs. Pope? Huh? Think about that. Where are we at here? Verse 27. Am I in the right place here? But I keep under my foot. I'm sorry. Hi, but I keep under my body and bring it unto subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a uh, castaway. All right. So first of all, I heard, I've heard people try to say they want to remove that word so they can say well Paul even admits that he could be cast away I and mean, that's exactly what people will say uh, Paul admits he could be cast away no that's not what this is talking about at all he does not want to present himself as those that are not saved that's what he's saying here he puts his body in subjection he dis disciplines himself so that he does not appear it look like those that are not saved those that are wicked he disciplines himself to have a higher standard than those that are not saved. I mean, if you read the whole thing, he is also uh, built the same way we are. He has the same desires, the same temptations, the same troubles that we go through. But in this particular verse, he's talking about disciplining himself so that he when he's preaching to others he 
does not appear to be as those that are not saved. Okay, I, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. In the sense that he doesn't want them to say, well, look, you, you're a hypocrite. You are a sinner just like those that you're preaching against and that, that sort of thing. You know, there's probably a hundred examples I could give. But that's the context. This in no way is saying, lest by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should lose my salvation. That's not what it's saying at all. And it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous argument. And of course, it makes sense that people that are not saved do not understand 1 Corinthians chapter 9. You have to have faith. You have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ before you can even understand what the Bible says. You cannot be unsaved and understand what the Bible says. It's not the way the Word of God works. And it's a miracle. It's amazing. And everything is in the Bible. All we have to do is believe. But even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. All right, so if you don't have faith, if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not be able to understand. You can read them. You can read the words fine, but you don't understand. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. So again, I implore you, Mr. Souls, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and stop trusting yourself and forget about that homo in Rome. Just ask his wife. He'll tell you. So, and let's look at the problem with biblical translation. As you know, we, Antichrist, don't use truncated Bibles. Uh, I mean, truncated means short, I guess. Shortened. Like the King, like the King, the King James Bible shortened. So, the Catholics, they add to the Bible. By their, own, by their own emissions. And we do think it has errors, of course. God has errors. The Bible has errors. So it's okay for there to be a homo in charge of the whole thing in Rome. Is that what you're saying? That's not the God that I believe in. One of them being an important verse, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Catholic Bible reads, but may have everlasting life. So this, that's what I'm saying, is that these corrupt Bible versions teach another gospel. They teach false doctrines, and they teach a false gospel. All right, then the, and by Mr. Soul's own admission, the Catholics teach a different gospel but may have everlasting may have you might so Jesus doesn't save you but um, you might have everlasting life if you can figure out all the nonsense that it takes to be saved according to the Roman Catholic Church the Antichrist Church come on now it's, it, they look King James Bible, they removed it. They removed it because it destroys this idea that the Pope is God Almighty. And that you could be saved outside of the Catholic Church. So, of course, you have to claim that the King James Bible removed it. According to Catholic doctrine, the only way you can be saved is by the Pope in Rome. That's the only way. There is no other way to be saved but through the Pope. You, you get a hard time getting them to admit that, but the, our friend here, Mr. Souls, he'll tell you straight out that nobody's saved except the Catholic Church saved them. All right, the Antichrist. He's the only one that can save you. <clears throat> All right, so let's well, get fired up on this stuff. Mortal sin. Why would God create someone a mortal soul? From the moment of conception, every person has a unique and immortal soul. 
Death is a moment the soul is separated from the body, not a moment when the soul ceases to exist. I agree with that. It's 3.30 in the morning here. I'll listen to your video during the day. When I get a chance, then I'll reply. And he, he kept his word. I believe this was the very first one. So, I like this guy, man. I like this guy because he, he keeps his word. He's not afraid. His only fault is he just got one fault, and that's, that, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? He's wrong about all this. That's his only fault. So anyways, I'm done. Done. This is at least, at the very least, this knockout in round two. Maybe he'll get up for round three. We'll see. But, I, I, you know, I don't care, really. I don't care. If you want to continue this conversation, let's continue it. Because you got two really big, important issues here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And one is the very most important issue, and that is everlasting life, salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. You either trust Jesus to save you, or you are putting your trust in yourself, which means you don't believe in Jesus at all. You're saying, if you don't believe Jesus can save you once and forever, then what you're saying is, he can't save you at all. Right? So that's, that's the most important thing is put all your faith and all your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? So this, I want abortion ended. But I know this world is full of wickedness, so abortion's not going to end, but the world will. Guarantee it. All right, so, anyways, I've thought about making a video on that topic that burns me up, that they're killing children, mass genocide, and nobody wants to talk about it. So anyways, uh, the other issue is, of course, how can you, it, once you are saved, how can you have a discussion on the Bible if you don't believe in any Bible at all? <clears throat> and that's a problem, right? So we go back, I think this was his first one. I'm not sure if this was his first one, but this is uh, nine years ago. That was a long, long time ago. I was just a little boy nine years ago. Just a short little kid, a chocolate chip eating kid. And September 28th, 2013. And the thing is, it's crazy because we never had any communication before we put out our first videos and the same thing with um, fake clouds in the sky he was one of my favorite youtubers and then he just disappeared I don't know if he got arrested thrown, thrown in jails or what but that guy just disappeared his channel went away and uh, he had a great comment. His main focus was uh, chemtrails, right? And then, of course, there was Roy Cooper. I'm not sure if he's changed his name or if he had a different name. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what he looks like. I don't think that's him. But anyways, he was another one who came out at the same time. So basically there's four of us in America, in Australia, in South Africa, and in Britain. So it's, to me, it, it, it just, it's amazing that four people all throughout the world could come together at the same time. Not come together, but come out and preach the same thing. That, hey, they're wrong. They're lying to us about this idea of a planet Earth. There was no connection between the four of us that, at that time. It was just, uh, to me, an amazing event. And uh, this fella, Mr. Souls, was part of it. And uh, 
He's always cordial. He's nicer than I am, if that ain't already obvious. He just got one mistake, man. Just one little insy bitsy mistake. One error, one flaw. Just, just a real little one, and that is he's wrong about everything regarding salvation and the Bible and being a Catholic and whatever else. So anyways, uh, I, I think that should close the door on that subject right there. But uh, this guy's a fighter. And I don't care if you want to fight, man, really. We can have this discussion all, every day, all day, what have you. What I would really like to do is uh, see you repent and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and realize that He is the one that can save you and that there's nothing you can do to save yourself. He has done it all. And there's nothing at all that you can do to save yourself. And then, if you if that happens, buddy, the rest will take care of itself. First of all, you've got to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's always been about faith. We go to Hebrews 11. Let's do it this way. It's always been, since Noah got off the boat, <clears throat> it's always been about faith. The righteousness, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Excuse me. Righteousness has always been about faith. <clears throat> and that not of yourselves. Man, what are you doing? You think you're going to stay saved? You think you got verses that say, oh, remain in me? Well, if you are born of the Spirit of God, then you have Jesus in you. And you are in Jesus, and nothing can separate you from the love of God. So therefore, remain in Him. Meaning, be confident, have peace, know that the Lord is with you and in you. And that's it. That's all that means. It's not that complicated. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It's not something that requires payment. Now that now that you know, it's like it's not a matter of well, all right, God has given you this to you. Now you have to work for it. And I tell you what, that makes me mad because I know a lot of people that are like that. They think, well, if you give them something, they have to give you something back, and they won't. They'll. They won't. They can't accept graciously a gift. And a lot of people like that. And, me. I'll try to be nice and gracious because that's the way you should be. But it infuriates me that I can't just be do something nice for somebody. It infuriates me. I'll never let them know about it, but I'm, I'll air it out right here. It POs me and it TOs me that I can't do something nice for somebody. To me, that's a sign that somebody hates me. If I try to do something nice to them and then they either refuse it or they try to give me something in return for what I have given them makes me mad everything makes me mad I'm mad all the time and verse 9 not of works so what are you doing you working to save yourself so in other words Jesus didn't do enough you have to you know some people say well if you sin you lose it or or then they'll say if you uh, you know you gotta you gotta I don't know what they say. You gotta do good stuff. You got you gotta remain in Jesus. You gotta preach the word again. You gotta go out and give money to the church and give me money and all that sort of thing. No. Nothing you do, nothing at all that you do is gonna save you. Jesus has done it all. Alright, so I think that's long enough. Alright, so my, I encourage you, Mr. Souls, 
just take some time to think about it. Well, why are you so invested in the Catholic Church? They can't save you. They will not save you. Only Jesus can save you. 